I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru. Arctic has come up with a version of its Freezer 33 cooler for AMD Threadripper, hence the TR suffix on the name. Uh, Threadripper 8, 12 or 16 cores. Uh, this, on the other hand, is a conventional 120mm tower cooler, uh, which would seem to be quite a big ask to say whether this uh, cooler can manage 16 cores of Threadripper. The previous version of 33 uh, that we've seen has a 150 watt TDP rating. There's also an extreme version that has uh, two fans. As it happens, this cooler comes with a second set of fan mounts. You can add a second fan. It's supplied with the one fan. Uh, so the 30, Freezer 33 has a 150 watt TDP rating. Uh, Threadripper has a 180 watt rating. You can see the problem. This cooler actually claims to have a 200 watt TDP rating, which is well, that, that's huge for a, such a small cooler. Uh, part of the change is the larger uh, base plate uh, that contacts the CPU heat spreader. Uh, in other respects, it's uh, what we expect to see. So four 6mm heat pipes and it's machined to expose the heat pipes. They make direct contact with the heat spreader. In terms of the mounting, uh, we've got some extra bracketry in the packet. Specifically, these two bits of tinware are different because uh, Threadripper has sort of two holes that are close together at one end of the socket and two that are widely spaced, which is why we have these uh, four pairs of holes. You use uh, one pair at one end and the other pair at the other to mount these brackets. Then these side brackets go on and you're good to go. With the Freezer 33 TR cooler installed on the ASRock X399 Tai Chi, uh, and it's keeping, do not forget, 12 cores of CPU cool, it sits here idling at 30 degrees Celsius, which is only a few degrees above ambient and is entirely acceptable. More to the point, it's almost silent. The fan is in a direct line in my head. It's making no noise whatsoever. Question obviously is, how does it perform when we start to run a benchmark? And as Blender kicks into life, the fan roars up to speed and it starts to work. 12 cores, 24 threads running at stock clocks, which means they're all running at 3.7 gigahertz under load. And temperatures are starting to rise. It's gone up from 30 degrees, now at 44. And in the course of this test, which lasts about 3 minutes 20, those temperatures now 52. They're going to level off around the 56, 57 degrees mark, which when you consider this is a straightforward, simple tower cooler with heat pipes is frankly quite remarkable. We used to see this sort of technology in the past working on Pentiums and Core 2 Duos and Core i5s and goodness knows what else. Threadripper is an entirely different kettle of fish and yet 53 degrees, you can see 100% load. 54 degrees, slowly hitting the ceiling and then it's going to sit there quite happily just keeping it under control. I can clearly hear the fan working, no two ways about it, but the thing is it's here. There's no case in the way, there's no baffling whatsoever, it's hitting me in the face and it's not that offensive. Uh, compared to plenty of graphics cards we have ever tested, this is entirely acceptable. It is, I have to confess, a really pleasant surprise. So. Uh, Threadripper 1920X running under 100% load at stock clock speeds, 54 degrees, give it time it will creep up another couple of degrees, but this is really impressive from Arctic. Against expectations, the Arctic Freezer 33TR managed to keep this Threadripper 1920X under control running at stock clocks. Overclock from 3.7 GHz, we're now running at 4 GHz, that's on all cores, 1.4 volts core voltage and we're running Blender once again. This time around, it has to be said, the Arctic is suffering. Uh, the cooler can manage up to 200 watts of TDP. The stock Threadripper is 180 watts, so it's just about in the right ballpark. Overclock Threadripper, it's drawing another 100 watts at the wall socket. So we're now way beyond the sensible limits of the Arctic, and yet the temperature 74 degrees now under 100% load. Uh, the temperature I expect it will rise during the course of this benchmark to the mid 80s, 85, which is hotter than we like because Threadripper, you're going to try and keep it just below 80. So we're in the sort of ballpark where you can expect parts of the processor to be throttling slightly. Nonetheless, this is a 12 core, 24 thread processor running beyond stock clocks, drawing an awful lot of power, way more than this cooler should be able to deal with. And yet, truth be told, 
it's not doing a bad job. Uh, now, this might seem an unreasonable test, but the fact is Threadripper is not a gamer's processor. It's for people doing work. Blender and such like is what this processor is designed for. Now, whether or not you choose to overclock your Threadripper, that's a different story. We've shown that actually this processor can handle Threadripper at stock clocks, the 12 core Threadripper at stock clocks. 16 core might be a different story. We'll have to test that at a different time. Uh, overclocked, it's just about hanging in there. I mean, it's not really to be recommended, but it can do it, which for such a basic looking cooler is really impressive going. The result of our testing is that Arctic Freezer 33TR can indeed handle a 12 core Threadripper uh, when it's working very hard. Once you overclock the processor, it's, it's out to lunch, the temperatures are far too high, but that's fair enough, Arctic was never claiming it could handle a 250 watt TDP, it was saying 180 watt with a bit to spare, and it did that indeed. Impressive stuff. I don't think adding a second fan would have made a lot of difference. Uh, I'm sure if Arctic thought it would, they would have supplied a second fan. Quite clearly this is a very budget cooler, 44 pounds, in the context of processors that got to a thousand pounds, or just under thousand uh, dollars. So, it works. The question is, should you use it? Now, in terms of performance, there is no difference in performance between this cooler and a 240mm Acetec all-in-one. The Acetec costs, call it £100, therefore this is clearly the budget alternative. And that's fair enough. So if you're looking to save money, this is the answer, job done. Aesthetically, on the other hand, I'm not so sure. Uh, there's no doubt that an all-in-one in your system, it leaves a load of space, it looks better, you've got more radiator than this cooler, I think people would generally be happier with a 240mm Acetec. In terms of function, if you're overclocking, it doesn't make a lot of difference. The Acetec has a very slight advantage, but it's so trivial it makes no difference. So if it's literally a case of do you spend 40 something pounds or 100 odd pounds, this is the answer. My guess is people won't. Uh, and that's simply because if you're spending the sort of money Threadripper entails, plus an X399 motherboard, plus a bunch of DDR4, really saving a few pounds on the cooler is almost immaterial. So yes, this cooler works exactly as described. Do I think people are gonna buy it? I honestly have my doubts. Uh, Having said that, I'm really impressed that Arctic has come up with a cooler that looks so rudimentary and does such an effective job. Impressive stuff. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from KitGuru, do click to subscribe. I'm Leo Wardock. This is Arctic Freezer 33TR.